Hey, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I'm trying to be quiet. There's lots of people here, and Glenn's on the other side of the room talking, and he's saying, like, really serious stuff. So let me know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm talking very quietly. I'm going to turn it around so you can see Glenn. Glenn is currently giving a tour of all his paintings right now. Thank you for the algorithmic engagement chat. But she was actually looking to see what he was reading. What cheered Abraham Lincoln up? Job. It was the book of Job. And he realized there's a reason for everything. God has it. And we're not going to know the reason. We just have to know what he has to Just stay on the right path. Um, this, this so all these paintings around here are glands. We are essentially ahead of Glenn in the tour, so you're experiencing this tour ahead of the people in the room who are going to pay like $10 zillion for these paintings. And you're seeing him first. Look at this. Yes, Glenn is a good painter. It's very frustrating to me. I would like him to be a worse painter than he is, because then I could make fun of him all the time. Really cool. No money, no problems. Wow, thank you for the uh, super chat there. Very cool. No money, no problems. I feel like so pretty nice. I should have brought my stupid thing that I can't get to work. This is, have you seen this one before? This was hanging in the studio as of a couple minutes ago, uh, like a week ago. Surgery went pretty well. Everyone's happy. Thank you. I was delayed two hours. Look at this. How does he do this? I really want you to know that I could totally trash this painting right now. Nobody would be able to stop me. This one's amazing. Uh, I'm like, oh, the cake is coming. I'm going to smear all these with cake later on. I'll let these people get through the tour first. Here we are. Here we are right now. City Fine Art. The 2022 collection. I have like cool prints here that these are like affordable for people as opposed to the giant paintings which I mean if you didn't want your kid to go to college I think you could get one right there. this is the prints this one's signed right there should I take some and just sign some of them in this pile and see if people get the fake signature it could be kind of funny just trying to keep myself entertained here I don't think these are these are other people's Wanted the war to start up again. And that's when he decided, if I kill that guy, the North will get all upset. I am a southerner and they'll go down. This one messed up what he was talking about. These two were the ones he was talking about on the air today. Thank God. Um, because of what he stood for. Because of what he stood for. He went down and he was racing down the stairs as Lincoln was getting ready to leave. Races down the stairs. He was going to kill that. his bare hands. He falls oh, wow. and trips. I'm going to pick up two of those. And Lincoln is here, walking this direction. A police officer is here, and Booth falls right down on his face, right between That's them. really cool. Lincoln walks on, uh, and the cop pulls Booth up by the scruff of his neck, and is going to read him They only let a few back. people in at a time. He He's done multiple tours today. This is, this is Leonardo DiCaprio of the day. He's a famous star. Oh my gosh, Mr. Booth, are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I just tripped. I hope I didn't hurt the president. Let him go. I'm trying to hang out and be quiet back here. People that I've talked to a few people already. Everyone's very cool as usual. Is a very complex I give him a lot of free passes because of the era he's living in. It was new, exciting. I just heard Glenn's that gives Theodore 
Roosevelt a pass, which I've never heard him say before, so he may be drunk. He may be back on the sauce. We're upstairs now. I can actually talk a little bit. You've seen this one before. Such a cool one. So cool. This whole thing is all Glenn. And you wonder why, like, hey, Glenn didn't seem to prep for the radio show today. That's because he was in this. There you go. This is called Let's Do It. The Spirit of the West. Oh, look at this. You guys recognize this guy? Ever seen him before? That's pretty cool. Here's a uh, little Charlie Chaplin. This one's pretty cool. You know this one if you... I think Glenn just saw this movie and decided to paint this. And, uh... Because <laughs> he has... What does he know about? I mean, it's like a sport. He doesn't know anything about sports. We all know that. You notice how Glenn paints a lot of sports? for a guy who knows nothing about sports. Like for example, if we will, right over here. Oh, am I chewing my gum too loud? I'm sorry. I'll improve that. That's pretty cool. You got Limitless. You kind of got the, the collection here, Lucky. Limitless and Fearless. Right here. Yeah, this one is like the baby. An orphan from World War One. Food. We've got food. Ladies and gentlemen, we have food. There's food here. Uh, that's really cool. It's big, too. I can't even... I gotta like step back to get him on. It's cool. Faded but not lost. I say, I keep telling Glenn like he's a much better painter than he is a radio host. He should just start doing this. Let's see. Cool. This one's kind of a cool, different style. Hey, you can see me in there. Hello. Hello. Heroes in the sky. Whoa. Anyone make a super chat for that? If you make a super chat for that, I'll try to pick it up for you. Got a 50-50 shot of getting it. Get the prints over here. Oh yeah, they got a lot bunch of smaller ones here. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Tiffany. Radio Hall of Fame, it's a sham. Until I'm in it, then it's the most respected group in America. Right Very cool. I mean, there's a lot here. Gosh, that relief factor must be working, huh? I think the guy paints all the time. Oh, this one's sold already. Sorry, guys, can't get this one for you. I don't know. I think he, I think Glenn told me he he like maybe this one he was doing and he got mad because he messed up his eyes or something, and then he decided to just change it to um, to tr to draw like graffiti on there because his brother. Yeah, here it is. My brother was a Red Sox fan, and this is exactly what your brother, a Red Sox fan, would would do to a Mickey Mantle card. Uh, Very cool. Uh, you know, but like I said, that's why I thought maybe, you know, he would be interested in doing something. And then when you see the original... How cool is that? Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. Very cool. See, so he's got prints of these, too. So they got paper prints, and they have signed ones as well. You live in Salt Lake. How are you not here? Come on, Kay. What's the deal? And... Got all the paintings out here. Oh, here's another one. I don't know if I show this one to you already. Very, very cool stuff. By the way, this this little town's awesome. 
Uh, people probably know that already, but it looks really nice out there. And uh, these paintings are pretty cool. Oh, I'm in another room now. Some other painters, I guess other. Oh, there I am. That's me. Hi. Just Oh, you're going tomorrow? Okay, good to see you. I won't be here tomorrow, so I'll miss you, but have a good time. This is when I walk down the stairs and trip live on camera, make a really loud noise and disturb the entire tour. Get ready. The chief didn't like it that um, his people were learning about Jesus, and so they were like, we shouldn't torture people after a war, and that was their culture, and he needed them to be hey, well, I guess at the price of this one. able to hold it together. So he broke the first treaty with the pilgrims. Somehow I don't know that we don't ever hear this. Um, Love your this shoes. Painted, Thank you. <laughs> um, this I painted, and there's another one, Hard Times Venus upstairs. I painted it right uh, as my book came out, my latest book. Believe it or not, uh, I don't enjoy my work. Uh, it is, uh, I can't tell you how many times I uh, pray to the Lord. Please, I don't This is really cool. Help me share positive things. Help me build up, not be the one who's just saying. Can you guys hear him at all? And it takes everything you need every day to do it. Um, when the book came out, it was about ESG and the Great Reset. I got off the air the first day, and this painting came to mind. Um, and I think it was a blessing to me from the Lord of look at things higher. You can dwell on how dark it is, or you can take the moments that are good and, and rest there. This is called Better Days. This is uh, uh, about the Allied troops that had just stormed the beaches on Normandy. One uh, group of allies uh, went in, they got off the beach, a lot of their buddies were dead, they're still facing Germany, it's 12 hours into the invasion, they get to one small town in France, and the French people are so happy, it's like 11 o'clock at night, and they're so happy to see them, they go and they get jugs of wine, and they say, come, let's celebrate, you're here. So, it's Eden, the hell they just went through. But in retrospect, those men probably look at that time as a good, that was a good day. Um, even though it was really dark, we have to start looking at things uh, and appreciating the moments that we have. Uh, this is, uh, this, guy. this is Bill Pickens. Anybody know rodeos? Have you ever heard of bulldogging? Okay, what's bulldogging? It's so dangerous. Yes, it is. What is it? Yes. So you jump on your horse, steer is there, you jump off, you grab his neck, you bring him down to the ground. That's bulldogging. Okay? This is the inventor, the first guy of bulldogging. Okay? That's his deal. He was an African American, um, he was for a big, big, big star. Uh, he was a silent film star in the 1920s. Um, in any rodeo, in any rodeo man of the salt knows who he is. Um, he was crazy. He was crazy. The reason why he started Bulldog is because he saw his god bring the spear to the ground because the, because the dog ran up and just bit the lip of the spear. And that spear followed that dog. And that dog came down to the ground and the spear came down with it. So the way bulldogging was done by him is he would jump off the horse, he'd grab the neck, the spear would go like this, he'd bite the lip of the spear, and they just fall to the ground. <laughs> he 
years down. So, so fast. Uh, and it was crazy to watch. And this is a day when they didn't cut corners, right? Um, he was so you know, adventurous, brave, crazy, I don't know. Um, but he went down to Mexico, he was on vacation, he goes down to Mexico, and he walks into the bullfight in Mexico. And he says to his friends, at his school, he's watching these matadors, you know, all dressed up, doing this, and he goes, this is ridiculous. Uh, well, that got out, because he's famous, and that got out to the matadors. And uh, they were offended, they said, you have not last three minutes. And he said, Really? Doing that? With a cape? I think so. And uh, so they said, next Sunday, we're getting the meanest bulls we have. Won't last two minutes. So he didn't last three minutes. The Mexicans called it off in 35 minutes. And the reason why they did is because the steer came out, he looked at him, bit him on the face, brought him down, did it three or four times, then the bowl was kind of in his pocket. He rode it <laughs> like a horse. <laughs> okay. 35 minutes into it, the, the people in the in the stands were throwing knives and bottles at him. And that's when they said, okay, 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 come back here, come back here. He never did another trip. <laughs> uh, this is New Rockney. If you know who New Rockney is, the famous line, uh, is win one for the Gipper. Uh, he is a very famous coach. He was a player. Uh, before that, this is an opportunity to player. Uh, the story is, is that a guy who was on his team, uh, they called the Gipper, uh, was sick, was in the hospital. The whole team came. And I know this guy. He doesn't. He can't possibly be uh, this talented. It's got to be a scam of some sort. Knit, uh, together, um, and it was a real problem uh, for the team losing him. They loved him. Rockney would go to his on the lot, and the story is, just before he dies, he says, yeah, what can I do for you? So that's the phrase ends with win one for the giver. But I think the part of it that we don't know or don't memorize is the important part. This was his response. Coach, when the team is up against them, when things are wrong, ask them to go in with all they've got and with one I'm trying this not to disturb them. Missing. We are missing that. We all think win, win, win. How do we win? No. Even when everything is against you, even when there is no possible way, when you are down and kicked in the face, Go back in with everything you've got. Win or lose, doesn't matter. Go in with everything you've got. This is the quintessential problem with our country right now. We're importing baby formula from Germany. We're having them airlift this. Are you kidding me? What is in the way of the baby formula factory? What is, what is it with us in America where we are just putting our hands in the pocket that this sucks? You know what? Get back into the game. But all the government has to do is get out of the way. Somebody needs to say to all of us, you're up against it, you feel like everything's going against you, everyone is calling you out. Go show them. Give them everything. Uh, force of nature, this is Orson Welles. Orson Welles is the reason I knew what I do. Um, he, is, he was just an amazing guy. I'm friends now with his daughter, and uh, she, said, um, she said to me once, I didn't know how weird I was until my dad went. He was my best friend. And they spent all their time together. He homeschooled her. Now, to give you an idea of what homeschooling life was like with Orson Welles, she told me, my dad told me on a Friday, Monday we start Shakespeare. Okay. Monday morning, he says, get in the car. And they live in Europe at the time, and he drives her um, to this huge castle. And he puts a blanket out on the grass in a basket, and he says, Macbeth. 
at court. And he acts all of the parts out for her. She's like, that's how I learned Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, a weirdo, a weirdo. Uh, he is amazing, amazing. Through her, I, I, I probably have the biggest collection of Orson Welles uh, stuff uh, because my mother at seven told me about radio and told me how different it was. And she gave me a record album, and I still have it. It's called The Golden Years of Radio, and it has War of the Worlds on one side by Orson Welles. That's when I knew what I wanted to do. I call this force of nature. He is, his company was Mercury Radio Theater. My company is Mercury Radio Arts. My studio is the Mercury Studios, all in my stage, stage 19, is Orson Welles' stage where he filmed Citizen Kane. Um, I've learned many lessons from him, but my favorite is don't ever take no for an answer. Don't. And almost everything I've ever done in my life is because somebody has said, you know, he can't do that. Oh, really? Because now I really, really want to. <laughs> you know? When they say no, you're like, oh, my God. I remember when I started The Blaze, Roger Ailes at Fox said to me, you're not going to do that. <laughs> that was when I knew for sure, absolutely. Over everyone's dead body, including mine, nothing's going to stop me. Um, Orson was that way. At the time, he was in New York, and he was the number one radio star, the number one Broadway star, and he was producing um, Othello on a stage at the Apollo Theater with an all-black cast. Had not been done before. Um, he, the, only, the only white person was Orson. Um, he had a problem with delegation. He liked to do everything himself. He was the costume designer. He was the lighting designer. He was the director and the star of it. At the same time he's doing that, he is also on Broadway doing another show. And he's doing three radio serials at the time. He played The Shadow. He was monstrous. One day, he's walking down uh, the street with his uh, partner, John Houston. Uh, yeah, John Houston, and he said, um, how's business, John? He said, Orson, it's great. All we need, all we need are more use. Um, he said, because we we, I had to turn CBS down for another radio show. And he said, you didn't talk to me about that. He said, no, of course not. It's uh, Saturday at 5 o'clock, and you've got the two shows. And Orson stopped and looked at him and said, yeah, my show, my first show is at 2. And then my next show is at 7. Five o'clock's wide open. And, and John says, you're out of your mind. I can't even get you to the studios that's in, in uh, the southern part of New York City. I can't get you downtown and return you to the stage fast enough. Just then, the ambulance goes by. And Orson stops and says, John, see if he has to be sick to ride <laughs> So every Saturday, after his first show that day, an ambulance backed up to the stage door. He got in, they turned the lights and sirens on, took him down to the radio show, then put him back in the ambulance and took him back to the stage. Force of nature. He did things that everyone said was impossible. Um, this is, uh, uh, I'm a big fan of W.O. I've got to, uh, I got to stick back here and put some of the stuff away. I'm going to give you a little taste of this. If you are in Utah, you should come by. Uh, I think tomorrow he's here like all day, so you should come by and uh, check it out because he's going to give this tour. And and I, if you know Glenn, he can't tell the same story twice in a row. It's like impossible. He has to like add new details or tell a totally different story. So come back, check this thing out. He's got um, you know moderately priced uh, uh, prints and stuff upstairs. And the good thing about this too is, I mean, look, we all love capitalism, of course, but these, uh, all the pro proceeds from this uh, whole exhibit are going to um, buy more uh, artifacts and protect artifacts for the museum. Um, so that's really cool. I mean, it's, uh, he's, I mean, I would have just kept the money. Frankly, if you guys will buy my paintings for $30,000, I'm just gonna keep it. I, uh, I'll be, 
preserving all sorts of stuff. Um, but that's actually what Glenn's doing with this. And it's, when he gets to go on tour and, and do, go on the shows and show all of these really cool um, uh, artifacts and stuff that he does on the show, this is what he's been, how he's been securing all of those things. Uh, so definitely worth your time if you happen to be in the, in the area. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, if you happen to be in the area, you should stop by. And uh, I think if you go to glenbeckfineart.com, you can see a lot of these, and you can, I think, get um, get the, uh, the the prints and stuff there as well. So if you happen to be in the area tomorrow, he's here. I'll try to post some more stuff on social media tonight, but uh, there's two things. One, I have to put this stuff down that I'm carrying around. And two, my arm's getting tired. So uh, I will, oh, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, and uh, I will see you guys in a little while again.